something here. <clears throat> Morning, afternoon, depending on your Whatever time, time it is. <laughs> <laughs> it's five o'clock somewhere. Um, yeah, <laughs> pop them if you got them. Uh, all right, so I'm Mark Collier with the OpenStack Foundation. And I'm Heather Kirksey with the OPNFE project. And uh, we're here to talk about the sort of collaboration kind of between our two organizations that I think has really been kind of like ramping up basically in the, in the past year. Yeah, I mean, we've, we just see um, a lot of different use cases for OpenStack in different markets. And one of the big ones, obviously, is NFV and part of how users get to market with something like an OpenStack powered uh, thing is by combining with a lot of other technologies and a lot of other uh, groups that are providing leadership and OPNFE is a great example of the opportunity to kind of collaborate with another group. So Heather's going to tell us all about OPNFE yeah. <laughs> soon. Yeah, so um, kind of as, as Mark said, um, OPNFE is an open source project that focuses on NFE and I'm just kind of curious about the mix of our audience. Um, what do we have sort of in the way of uh, people who are, who, who would raise their hands that they're very familiar with OPNFE as a use case for OpenStack? All right. Who would say that they're sort of moderately, you've heard about this NFE thing, but you're not entirely sure what it's all about? And who's kind of like, eh, NFE, what, how did I wander into this room? <laughs> so, uh, so, you know, just so, since we do have some folks that aren't as familiar, NFE is really, it's a, it's a network transformation that the global telecom operators are undertaking where they are moving from a network made up of proprietary, monolithic, kind of custom-built hardware uh, elements and, uh, uh, and appliances and moving what was the functionality in those into software applications that can run in cloud type architectures. And so it's a pretty significant sort of change in approach in the industry. And uh, the OPNFE is an open source project that's really focused on helping the ecosystem of networking providers to sort of make that, that transition. And, uh, you know, basically we, we need, to, we need to work together. So there are a lot of different piece parts um, that are sort of necessary to, to compose and build a usable uh, NFE platform. And a lot of what we focus on as a project within OPNFE is doing that systems integration work of figuring out how those parts fit together and work together. And then also at the same time, what are the missing features and capabilities that are necessary in those upstream components uh, to realize uh, NFE use cases? Yeah, I think, you know, in the OpenStack uh, side of it, um, obviously in the OpenStack community, there are a lot of um, developers and users that are getting more and more active specifically around you know, uh, that wanting this NFV use case to be viable with, within an OpenStack context. And so, you know, it's really good uh, to be able to have the different uh, folks that are part of OPNFV and that, that organization to be, you know, here. A lot of them are here this week, as well as, you know, participating in a lot of the, the sessions and discussions that they have and they're within their collaborative structure. So it's really not just kind of a let's meet once a year thing. This is like everyday collaboration. Uh, it's not really, am I in one community or the other? You know, many people are sort of in both communities and it's, it's you know, really trying to get to one solution to solve people's problems is gonna require more than just OpenStack. And so we're always encouraging people to, to participate, of course, at our summits, but also for anyone who's, who's really active in OpenStack to attend um, other events and, and online discussions and other uh, meeting forums uh, within these other structures and communities like what OPNFE is uh, doing. So you can talk to this slide. <laughs> sure. According to this slide. The <laughs> open, uh, um, yeah, so, I mean, obviously, um, compute storage and networking is what OpenStack is all about, and uh, networking being one of the key words there, um, it's become... Uh, really a, a somewhat of a de facto standard, I think, now within the major telco segment. Um, I just heard that Verizon was speaking next door about how they're, they're using OpenStack in production for their NFV, um, you know, work. And so, you know, we have a, a lot of the major carriers all over the world, SK Telecom, you know, the list goes on and on. They're, they're you know, planning to utilize OpenStack as, 
a component in their, in their um, NFV story. And as, as Heather was saying, you know, the old world was very much like proprietary fixed function devices in all kinds of data centers and smaller sort of central offices. And that hardware was basically impossible to upgrade. You had to rip and replace. So if you want to SMS to MMS, okay, that's a multi-year transition, very, very expensive hardware you're throwing out for more very, very expensive hardware. And then when something else comes along, you got to do it over again. So it's a massive uh, benefit that these telcos see from going to something like NFV, but it's, you know, it's not a small undertaking. But it, you know, given how big the telco market is, it's really exciting for OpenStack to be, have a role in that because certainly when we started it, we had no idea it would be going in so many places, but that's kind of the, the beauty of open source. So now it's a really big use case. Yeah. And kind of to follow on a little bit on that, on sort of like sort of the business drivers around that, you know, we were talking about the movement from the hardware to the software. You know, part of it is just provisioning and management. It's just, it's brittle and it's hard, so it's hard to roll new services. And for a long time, basically the introduction of a new service would mean a completely brand new network and network architecture. So I used to work for uh, Alcatel Lucent, um, uh, now Nokia. And um, you know, when IPTV came out, we actually designed a brand new network and we sold the network, um, it was called, internally called Lightspeed, to AT&T to enable Uverse. And so that was like a multi-year process of designing brand new sort of networking interfaces, figuring out how to deliver broadcast television over IP, you know, sometimes you know, digging up streets to lay like new fiber and stuff. And by the time we got done with that, do you know what happened? Netflix. So after like a six year transition of designing this network, implementing this network, putting it in, putting the stuff in, it was just in time for a completely new model of the service consumption. And so that's not, it's not really the way we can keep doing this going forward. We need to be able to sort of react more quickly, um, have less risk, um, sort of de-risk the ability to invest in new applications and services as an industry so we can sort of you know, focus on delivering more interesting things rather than you know, managing a bunch of pieces of hardware. There's actually a popular expression, which is that the best way to uh, predict the future is to plan for it. I actually hate that expression because <laughs> I think that uh, you know, open source and collaboration is the best way to make sure you can respond to the unknown, which is what you're definitely gonna hit when you get to the future. <laughs> There's no way to predict the future. It's actually a false, false idea. And I think that, that I never heard that example before. Yeah. That, that reinforces my belief that that's a, that's a bad expression. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna agree with you. Okay. <laughs> um, so you know, we just talked a little bit about OPNFE. So you know, we're focused on sort of a carrier grade, integrated uh, open source platform. And what we're really interested in doing is help advance um, and accelerate the introduction of NFE products and services. So sort of like, you know, what is the industry needing right now and how can we, you know, how can we help do that? So we've um, got a collaborative vision right here. You can read the slide. Um, is there anything that, that you yeah, want I mean, to say? Yeah, I think that this is just, you know, an attempt to kind of encapsulate in, in a sentence, you know, kind of the, the general idea we've been trying to convey, which is, you know, people, uh, there's a huge opportunity out there. People want to, uh, in the telecom world, you know, virtualize their networks. And it, it just, it's hard sometimes, I think, if you're coming from the IT or cloud world to just understand how big and massive this transition is. You know, the, the telecom industry is over a trillion dollars a year. And, you know, that's actually a huge chunk. I think it's like 40% of the total IT budget goes into telecom. And if you're, if you're in telecom, you think about that all the time. But if you're in kind of coming out of the, the, the rest of the tech world, it's just something that's kind of foreign. But as I've learned more about it, I realize this is just an incredible opportunity for OpenStack if we, if we get the collaboration right. And so we're working on that now. Yeah, and so just a little bit of market uh, research background. Uh, we had a heavy reading uh, do uh, a, a report for us heading into OPNFE's summit uh, last November. And uh, some of the sort of interesting things are that, you know, 60% of the telecom providers are actively um, exploring NFE and beginning to work on implementation around NFE. Um, you know, 50, more than... More than half said, you yeah, know, this is good. Thought that OPNFE would uh, actually help do acceleration. 68% um, cited OpenStack as very important uh, to the success of NFE, of NFE. So the telecom operators out there who are looking at this you know, network transformation obviously are recognizing the important level. Those are level. very smart so, people. Yeah. <laughs> and then... Um, 
you know, and just kind of a, an idea where the, the, the industry is around this, it's, you know, it's, it's growing, like people are doing stuff, but it is still, still relatively nascent. Um, you know, the 26 are sort of in the testing proof of concept phase, um, and 19 are actually sort of beginning to fully deploy. So we really are at the beginning of kind of a long journey together. And I'm just uh, scroll through here. Um, so uh, looking at some of the integration points that we have um, as, as organization, obviously there's a large overlap of members, a large overlap of our end users um, as well. So, you know, AT&T, um, the super user this year, obviously they are, you know, doing a lot with NFE and a lot of what they're planning to use OpenStack for uh, is around their NFE um, transformation. Um, and then we also, we, we do a lot sort of at the board level to sort of collaborate. We're doing stuff at the kind of foundation staff level mm -hmm. around marketing plans. Little hitch. We've got lots of uh, collateral actually in a, right outside the room. So uh, go pick up some of our joint collateral that we've uh, done together. And yeah, then, I'll just give a shout out to Kathy Cacciatore, who's right got to be there somewhere. Yes. Has, from, from the OpenStack Foundation staff side, just put puts an uh, amazing amount of effort and, and skill into to, you know doing our part. So thank you, Kathy. She's worked on a lot of the collateral as well. While we're at it, I'll give a shout out to Brandon Wick, who's been working alongside Kathy on that. So awesome. Um, yeah, and then obviously a lot of what we really are looking to do is really help facilitate the collaboration between the technical community, since that's where code gets written, the rubber hits the road, and the you know important artifacts are are actually produced. And so that's been a large topic of discussion amongst all of us trying to figure out the right way to uh, you know to get the communities working with each other. Like what was the you, you at lunch had a sort of a funny um, quotation from I think one of your members um, sort of about uh, sort of not being really able to understand sort of the, the telecom people that we kind oh, of yeah. speak kind of funny yeah, languages. Was, I think it was yeah, Monty who usually, he'll probably just appear when I say his name because he's usually everywhere at once, but you know, Monty Taylor has been around OpenStack forever and he said, you know, he'll start a conversation in here like just a series of acronyms and be like, I have no idea what you said, and then they explain. He's like, "Oh, well, why didn't you? Why didn't you say so? It's just, you know, it's just like this Linux networking thing, you know. So there's, there's kind of that translation between worlds that has to go on, you know. The the, the OpenStack world is very much kind of coming out of Linux and Linux networking concepts, and uh, you know, kind of computer networking, and and not necessarily as steeped in the the acronyms of of the network world from from the a telco perspective, and it. You know, we have our own acronym soup in, uh, in OpenStack land, but uh, it happens as well in, in telco. So just it's taken some time for everybody to kind of get on the same page about what all the, the words mean. It turns out they're actually talking about the same stuff. Usually it's just slightly different words. So that's getting over that point has been really helpful. Yeah, uh, we, we really do like acronyms in telco world. <laughs> All right, so we've done a, you know, a variety of, uh, you know, sort of things this week sort of around that, some luncheons with, with various PTLs, um, you know, getting input into, you know, understanding the product working group and its role in OpenStack, you know, mm -hmm. I, I feel sort of bad. I mean, we've been involved in a year and, and I didn't really know that the product working group even existed, which... That's totally normal. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, we're, we're constantly evolving in OpenStack how to kind of do uh, open source in, in new and better ways. Um, and, and some of that involves, you know, creating new teams. And then when we create the new teams, you know, letting people know about it. And, you know, we, we get together twice a year, which is awesome. But in between, um, a lot happens. And, and it, it's sometimes a challenge to let everyone know, oh, we've got this, this group and this is their function. Here's when you can get involved. But, you know, these summits, usually there's a huge burst of collaboration that happens right after because all the people find out, oh, you were working on this, so was I. Let's, let's talk next week. And, so it's it's great that you guys can get active in our product working group. It's it's actually been a it's been a big help uh, for OpenStack. Yeah. So and that's been one of I think the lessons for us is it was just you know it can sometimes be a bit um it's a word I'm looking for. Uh, OpenStack is such a large community. It's sometimes a little bit you know difficult to figure out the right ways to to get engaged and get involved. So it's been very useful to you know begin to get information on some of these other processes and 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 things going on that we as a community can you know make use of to help sort of the OpenStack community better understand our use cases and and what we're trying to do. So this is sort of a a, a kind of joint diagram sort of pointing out sort of. Um, 
you know, kind of our sort of stack um, here. So you see, obviously, OpenStax, a sort of key part of it with, um, you know, across the, net, the, the network and the compute and the storage um, of virtualization and control. And if you sort of look at what OPNFV does, um, we do a set of, of things, right? So we take sort of pieces of OpenStack. Um, we also take things from other upstream communities, uh, such as SDN controllers, uh, OVS, uh, KVM, Linux, uh, various uh, automated deployment tools around that. And we actually do sort of integration work amongst all of those pieces. You know, different communities tend to be heads down, sort of trying to get their software working um, and aren't necessarily thinking about sort of its you know, integration points with all these other pieces uh, across the network. So that's one of the things we really do is focus on integration and deployment. The other thing we do is a lot of testing. So you know, to, to realize some of these features, it requires sort of all, this thing, you know, all of those pieces to be put together. So doing testing at a system level to see, all right, we had these blueprints that we got accepted into various OpenStack projects. We had some things that we got accepted into OVS. We had some things that got accepted into the Linux kernel. Did we actually manage to achieve what we set out to do? So that's kind of what we're, we do with a lot of our testing. Um, and then finally, sort of the work that we do then to take those blueprints and specs and changes and enhancements from a, in a fee perspective back into, into the upstream communities, like, like this one. All right. So, um, so I just, we were going to kind of maybe highlight some, uh, a couple different projects with touch points here, um, some of which are sort of new and some of which have been actually pretty um, successful in, in working with each other. So one of our projects is called Doctor. And it is looking at uh, fault management and, and, and monitoring and, and fault alarms. And uh, sort of when we started, the ability to sort of get alarms notified was on the order of several minutes, which depending on a lot of enterprise applications, you know, is perfectly fine. But for a network that runs 911, perhaps is less so. So um, well, we had a, a doctor team that identified a number of different, um, you know, sort of across multiple projects and even a couple other upstream communities, of sort of just some specific changes that would be able to make that work better. Um, some of which got into Liberty, some of which are uh, in Mitaka, and some of which are still in progress for New uh, uh, Newton. Sorry, I almost called it Neutron. Uh, <laughs> um, and got the fault. Um, fault alarming down to an uh, order of a second. So, you know, it was a really, and then that actually, you know, you can think about it, there are probably many other industries just besides the telecom industry that can make use of sort of that improved fault management. So it's sort of, you know, something that's greater for the, good for the greater community as well. And so you can sort of see a list of the, the various blueprints uh, that we, we had right here that went through the doctor project. Yeah, and, and like, I'm sure most of you are familiar with, you know, OpenStack process, but blueprints, if you're, if you're not familiar, is, is part of, you know, kind of the, the pre-work that goes on to specify, you know, what uh, we want to develop or what somebody's interested in seeing develop as a f feature within a future, a future OpenStack release. So it's part of that, that specking process. And, um, you know, if, if you're, the product working group's a, a, another sort of level to engage in, but this is a, a specific tactic, if you will, that if you're not familiar with, you know, it's, it's important to, to learn about as you start to want to get involved in the upstream OpenStack community. So it's, it's been awesome that the OPNFV communities uh, learned, the, they learned the ropes in terms of some of the idiosyncrasies of our process. And, you know, blueprints are a really good sign that uh, you're contributing some requirements. Yeah. All right, um, another project, and this one, this one is a new one. Um, there was actually a presentation from Ian Wells earlier today on this project, and this is a project in OpenFE called Not Ready, which is looking at some of the, the networking requirements that sort of our constituency um, has uh, around, um, you know, around what we're trying to do. And, um, you know, I think this is it's very interesting because, you know, for, for most people out there, networking is just one of those things you have to get in place so you can run your cool, interesting applications. For our industry, the networking is the cool, interesting application, right? So it's, you know, it means that there are 
harder and stronger sort of needs for around sort of some of the networking capabilities and requirements in order to be able to deploy sort of the, the level of service that you, you know, depend on every day when you use your cell phone or when you, you know, get data on your phone or, or in your house. So it's, uh, you know, there, there are a lot of sort of, you know, working and, and, and evolving sort of around, around this as well. That sounds good. I think we have the next one's on, yeah. on Tacker. Yeah, so, you know, one of the things that we talk about in OpenStack is for a while is that philosophically um, we started to think of it as an integration engine because if you really, people have always tried to get their head around what exactly is and is not OpenStack. But if you look at an OpenStack cloud, it's always integrated other components, other open source components frequently, like KVM for the hypervisor and so forth. And early on, you know, there was always this confusion that people thought OpenStack was a hypervisor, which was a sign that, you know, we hadn't done a good enough job yet to explain what it was. I think we got over that one now. But now we think about, you know, other points of integration. And in some cases, that means uh, introducing a new project that really helps uh, fit a specific use case for a market, in this case, you know, NFV with virtual network functions in order to integrate those in sort of an OpenStack native way. This OpenStack Tacker project was, was created. And it, I think it's off to, a, off to a strong start. Yeah. And so for those of you who are a bit newer to some of our acronyms and nomenclature, uh, VNF, which virtual network function, is, is the name for the, the application itself, the, the networking application that runs on top of the, the infrastructure um, layers. Yeah, I think that, that's a really good point that probably it is another area where it gets hard sometimes with the, with the language and the words to, for people to grasp is that what's the app on the network? Well, the network is the app. And you, as you said, and I think that, that you know, helps me think about it a little bit better. I mean, network services are uh, the thing that you know, essentially telcos are in the business of doing, among other things. So for them, it's not, it's not a secondary sideshow. It's a you know, massive business and it has to work and it has to work right and reliably and quality of service and all these other things that you know, we obviously need in any networking environment, but it come, takes it to another level when that's really the service you're, you're offering and selling in a lot of cases. So here's just a little bit more uh, information on Tacker from the, from the Tacker team. And then obviously we've got a, a number of, you know, shared end users, which we mentioned early, earlier, you know, AT&T, uh, China Mobile, Docomo, Orange, SK Telecom, Telecom Italia. So, you know, we have a common end user base as well. So, you know, you know, I know that OpenStack has a, a number of different sort of markets and customers across different segments. You know, we're, we're a bit more focused and concentrated in the, in the telecom world, but, you know, they're, they're coming together. They're, 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 not, nece they're not necessarily different um, mm -hmm. anymore. So, and then um, we kind of wanted to leave some time for questions. So we'll sort of have um, kind of the, re you can see some resources up here. And as I mentioned, there's some collateral out there. And uh, we are having a summit uh, in Berlin in June. And so we'd definitely really like to encourage you know, various OpenStack people who might be interested in some of these use cases to, to come to that. Um, I know, you know, a lot of maybe kind of like long time stackers are sort of like, what, what is all this, this weird telecom stuff? But if you think about OpenStack being used as the foundation for the next generation of global telecommunications networks, the things that connect your phone, your laptop, your, you know, IP, you know, your, your Chromecast, you know, wh whatever you have in your home or sort of mobile, you know, mobile devices with you, this is what we're doing. So Pretty I mean, freaking I, cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, I think it's actually a really cool, interesting thing from, you know, a developer perspective to, to think that what you're working on as OpenStack is a thing running the world's networks. So. Yeah, and just one more comment on the, the joint users and the, the user examples. So you mentioned at and you know, they gave, gave a keynote on Monday and as well as some breakout sessions. So all those videos are online now. And SK Telecom gave a keynote back at the Tokyo Summit. So I'm, I'm always, uh, you know, plugging our videos because it's awesome that we were able to have sessions uh, and share that content with people that can't attend them. Even if you're at the summit, you can't attend every session because there's so many parallel things. So there's a lot of, there's a, a treasure trove of information out there from past talks and you can go onto you know, YouTube and find them and stuff. And uh, it's good to, uh, if you want to look, look and see some talks you couldn't see. Yeah. All right, so we've actually, we've got 10 minutes left for questions, so. Yes. So. What is the relationship between Tacker and Open Source Meno, OSM that is leading by Etsy now? 
Um, I was hoping, <laughs> I wonder if, uh, I don't know, we see a Jose Francisco in here? I'm sorry? Okay. All right. We have the PTL here, so I, I didn't realize we had royalty in our midst. All right, so uh, we, uh, so we are two different MANO projects at this time, um, but we do uh, interact at common forums. There is general interest to collaborate on common things like uh, libraries and uh, elements of MANO, um, but we are different projects at this time. Okay. Thank you. And if you could direct all your future questions to him, he, he knows all the information. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for coming. Um, any other questions? Here we go. Uh, Samet from STC. Uh, my question is actually about the timelines. Yani the main target of OP NFV, as we understand, is to build, let's say, reference implementation model that all, let's say, vendors will comply to it. But till now, I didn't see, let's say, timelines. What is the target? Uh, are we going in line with EDSI standardization as well? So this is mainly my question. And, and what do you mean timelines for what? To get the, the outline or the, uh, the output of the work so that we have at the end of the day one reference implementation model that we can deliver to vendors. Here what you have to do. So I'm not actually sure that we're ever going to end up with one reference implementation model. Uh, if you look at what we did in our Brahmaputra release, which was uh, in, in March 1st, um, you know, there were, we actually delivered sort of integration with three different um, SDN controllers, for example, um, Onos, Open Contrail, and um, Open Daylight, um, and those are those are there. Um, you know, we were able. You know, we would deploy with you know vanilla OVS as well as an enhanced version of OVS. Kind of same thing for KVM. Um, there, there are kind of just other sort of pieces where there are multiple options out there, and we're doing. You know, we're, from an integration perspective, we're not necessarily trying to pick winners as OPNFE. We're, we're trying to facilitate kind of the innovation, you know, from a community. So I think saying that there's one platform is probably, you know. It's not the target? The target not, I, 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 just, well, I don't think it reflects reality. Um, just because there are so many choices and components, I mean, maybe 10 years from now, we'll be down to one SDN controller, and we've realized that that was the SDN controller that won, but I mean, I think it, in, in the meantime, we had this uh, concept that came out in, in Brahmaputra of scenarios, which are sort of different kind of flavors of, of the platform that we build that we run tests against, um, and so, and that's something that we're kind of continuing to take forward into our Colorado release. Um, but specifically around output, um, our next release is Colorado, and it will be coming out in the, um, what did you say, Chris, after summer? <laughs> uh, late September, most likely. Thanks. Yeah. Any other questions? All right, well, it's, it's definitely five o'clock somewhere, and I think that's here. Yeah. So. <laughs> I don't know if anyone else is getting thirsty. Um, but it's I'm, an open source community. Yeah. We're always thirsty. <laughs> the thirst is never quenched. Uh, well, thank you all. I hope we quenched your thirst for knowledge about NFD. <laughs>